You've likely heard the term incognito mode countless times. Some version of it is a feature in the vast majority of modern web browsers. But what exactly is incognito mode, and what does it even do? Assuming you knew nothing about it at all, you'd likely assume from the name alone that such a tool would conceal you online. Even the logo for Google's incognito mode, a disguise consisting of a hat and glasses, evokes a feeling of anonymity. Unfortunately, incognito mode is not the useful security tool that it may appear to be. In 2005, Apple's Safari was the first major web browser to implement a private browsing feature. In 2008, Google's Chrome introduced their version, dubbing it for the first time incognito mode, which is where we get the term. The following year, Internet Explorer and Mozilla Firefox introduced private browsing options as well. It was intended to give users an option for browsing the web where no cookies would be created. Letting a friend use their computer? If they're in incognito mode and check their Facebook page, when you check yours later that day, you'd still be logged in. Online shopping for gifts? Or visiting a site that's a little not safe for work? Nobody has to know. Today it seems like we all browse the web on our own personal devices, but remember, in 2005 there was no such thing as smartphones, and desktop computer sales still accounted for half of all PC sales. So the likelihood that you'd be sharing a computer with someone else was high. That made the idea of a browser feature that could pause the recording of your history make a lot of sense. However, that's basically all private browsing is. Your internet service provider can still see all of the websites you visit, and the websites you visit can see your IP address, and advertisers can still easily track you online. In fact, a lawsuit against Google in 2022 over incognito mode uncovered some interesting things. The $5 billion class action lawsuit accused the company of misleading users by making it seem as if incognito mode would stop them from being tracked online, despite Google continuing to collect their information. As a part of the lawsuit's discovery process, it was found that Google engineers working on the Chrome browser openly criticized the feature. One employee wrote, We need to stop calling it incognito and stop using a spy guy icon. And they weren't the only ones. Even Google's marketing chief, Lorraine Tuhill, seemed to have concerns. In an email to CEO Sundar Pichai, she wrote, quote, Make incognito mode truly private. We are limited in how strongly we can market incognito because it's not truly private thus requiring really fuzzy, hedging language that's almost more damaging. In other words, private browsing in general has a bit of a branding problem. It's private in the sense that if someone has physical access to your device and are trying to check your browsing history, there's not much to find. But incognito mode is not much of a tool at all against a hacker or a data breach or a data broker or even your ISP. If you're trying to stay hidden online, tools such as VPNs are a good option. Rather than simply telling your browser to stop recording your browsing history, they work by routing your web traffic through a different server altogether so no one can see your true location. In other scenarios, other tools can help, like the Tor browser or proxy servers or SSH tunnels, all of which do slightly different things. But unfortunately, in terms of privacy, incognito mode is not all that useful. 